only lasts for five minutes. That's fine. Um, no problem. <laughs> I can deal with that. <laughs> Here we are. <laughs> <laughs> it was funny because I, I had a bunch of uh, I, I had a bunch of interesting questions on um, on Instagram about this uh, uh, beforehand. I just like a few hours ago, I put it on an Instagram story, and uh, I was like, Any, "Anyone have questions about DMT?" <laughs> and someone was just like, "What's with the carnivals? <laughs> Why is there carnivals?" <laughs> so yeah, uh, I, I I I bring that up because I I think it's. An important addition to what we're talking about is this interesting, for me, issue that needs to be solved about why are people having such similar experiences and not just like, hey, I went in, saw some fractals and like, cool, I saw fractals too. Like, I went in, saw a carnival and then there was this purple woman in, in in the carnival who then i find like 3 months later some guy in turkey hacking his um uh who also does dmt and does art sees this same woman as well to really get to grips with DMT, you have to approach it from a number of different angles. You have to be a part chemist, part pharmacologist, part neuroscientist, part psychologist. You have to have your fingers in a number of different kind of academic yes. pies, um, I think. Um, yeah, so yeah. That's, yeah, that's why. It's part that's of why, why I have this podcast. Right, right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> So that's where it started, um, and um, and yeah, and that's where it continues. I think um, you know, what you said about and that's really for me as a neuroscientist. Uh, when people people don't just describe going to places that are kind of overly you know hugely complex or fractal or hyperdimensional, but they 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 do des describe the same. The, the ambiance of the DMT space seems to be the same. People do describe this kind of comical mischievous jokerish kind of ambiance the dmt space has um and that's that's kind of tricky to to explain it's not straightforward it it's easy people are often quite glib um even kind of neuroscientists are quite glib and they will say well this is this is just hallucinations it's just um it's just when the brain's perceptual mechanics you know aberrate you know and they will often you know they'll reel off a lot of this very kind of um technical language in the hope of kind of blinding you with bullshit basically uh, but, but really if you if if you really think about dmt properly and, and and say okay let's take that proposition that premise that dmt really is just hallucination let's try and work out how that works and actually you run into yeah. you run into problems you run into problems and i i, I do still it's for me as a neuroscientist that studied DMT for many years, it's confounding. It's very difficult to explain why people have mm. these very, very, uh, very, familiar, very specific uh, and specific to DMT as well. Um, there is some mm. argument that high doses of psilocybin can take you into the same, into a similar kind of space. And that's perhaps not too surprising in that psilocybin is also uh, a tryptamine. Uh, and it's very, very close. I it's actually. Very close structurally as well. I found I didn't find that experience to be the case until after I had started doing DMT, and um, and then and then on high doses of of uh, of mushrooms in in like peak states, I could have what what I would describe as a full DMT ex like five ten minutes long almost the exact same sort of thing May, maybe not seeing the same like purple woman or familiar worlds or whatever but it's not like i i see any of the same thing every single time on dmt anyway but um but yeah it, it was almost i mean i always thought that it was like well i guess some pathways must have been opened that once they're established then then psilocybin can um, it, it can get there as well. I, I mean, I yeah. know um, 
I know I, I had uh, I had toured with um, uh, just starting before quarantine. I was touring around with um, um, Sophia Rockland, who has uh, done you know uh, just a quite a bit of ayahuasca um, for uh, for a young person um, and. And I know when she even does like ketamine or anything, she's like, "Oh, I went into like the ayahuasca um, space," you know. And and, and, and so, I've so also felt that. Yeah, I, yeah I mean, I've also sorry, had times. Kind of... Yeah, I mean, I also I also had a time once when I um I think I OD'd on on uh, pain pills. I I had an injury, mm. um and uh, and had and had uh, some pain pills and got just lost count um one night was having a bit uh too much fun and i had a dmt experience um then which i actually think i was pretty i think i was maybe dying um and and then there's been uh and then definitely um psilocybin plus a float tank Uh was just like the most dmt ish experience um that i had ever had and 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 granted this is after having done dmt so um yeah i think um yeah i mean your 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 brain is when you have a dmt experience your brain is always constructing that experience that's Mm -hmm. that's not to say that the dmt space isn't real or objective but but it's always the case as you well know that your brain is always constructing that that model um, it's, just it, like it's constructing has... the wall behind me right now or, right, or exactly. whatever else. Exactly. Right. And, and it's certainly true that once the brain, you know, the brain has to evolve, it has to learn to construct these kind of these models. And certainly once the brain has done it once, uh, it's certainly easier um, for it to do it again. And it will tend to do it again, uh, uh, perhaps even under entirely different circumstances, uh, given the opportunity. Uh, with any kind of disruption of of the nor- uh, you know of your brain's kind of normal model building mode and that could be from psilocybin it could be ketamine uh, it could just be sensory deprivation as well when the brain isn't constantly receiving sensory information that it has to kind of explain um, when you can even, when you remove that that restriction then the brain is in a position where it can actually start to explore different states uh, and so, mm. you know, if you had an ex- a DMT experience before, um, then it's not surprising that the brain might adopt uh, that state. You know, the brain seems remarkably capable of constructing these realities. And that is also a really um, difficult thing to explain from a neuroscientific perspective, because we, we did evolve to construct really one model of reality and that's the normal waking world that's what the brain has evolved to do that's what you your brain learns to do from the moment you you kind of emerge from the womb your brain is learning to construct a a model of reality it's this model so when you smoke dmt the brain suddenly and, and, and kind of inexplicably becomes capable of constructing these bizarre realities that have that bear no relationship whatsoever to the normal waking world um, filled with intelligent beings you know constructing high dimensional geometries that that is not simple to explain that's not a case of simply saying oh this is just hallucination this is really difficult to explain uh shit uh basically Mm -hmm. um and 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 you know, neuroscientists have to kind of start to deal with that, that this is not just a, a case of something that can simply be explained away as mere uh, hallucination. Yeah. And, and even if it was a hallucination, it would be quite important to understand why people hallucinate in that way. What causes that hallucination?